Hey parents, thanks for checking back in with our channel. Today we wanted to spend a few minutes talking about something that is very near and dear to us and that question is, should I tell my child about their learning difference? Caitlin, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this question. Sure, okay, so this is a tough one and it's because it comes from a place of such compassion. You know, we care about our children, obviously, and so maybe your child's been struggling and they've just gotten the diagnosis of dyslexia or maybe it's autism or you know this that and the other okay so there's the question of should i tell them and then there's also kind of that other question of how do i tell them and it's hard because you see your child struggling and especially i've, I've heard this situation a couple times you have one sibling who is great at school. They have straight A's, mm -hmm. you know, they're the kid that everyone drives them crazy because they don't even study for the test and then they get an A and then the other kids who spend I'm five hours. So jealous of those kids yeah. when I was in school. <laughs> exactly. So they have that one child and then they have another child who is the opposite. They're the ones who are spending hours, like three hours on a homework assignment that the teacher said, this should take 30 minutes. And you're just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So how do you deal with that when you have one child who's so different and how do you make them not feel badly about themselves? So sometimes your initial instinct is, well, if I just don't tell them, they'll never know they're different. Okay. So, um, that is not going to happen. So today we wanted to talk about kind of our three main reasons why you absolutely, absolutely should tell your child about their learning difference. So the first one, they already know that they're different. Yeah. They may not have directly expressed it to you at this point, but even if they're in kindergarten, they know. Okay, they know whenever all of the other kids are able to, you know, if it's ADHD, are able to sit in their chair and they're bouncing off the walls and constantly getting in trouble. They're not oblivious to that. They might not have made it to the leap of, oh, I might have a learning difference, but they, they see that they're different. They're living it all day. Or if it's dyslexia, they know that the other kids can start reading these words, or if, even if they're an older student, they see that other kids can read out loud. And when they're asked to read out loud in the classroom, they get laughed at. Like they know that there's something different. Okay, so that's the first, that's the first thing. They know, okay. The second one is going to be, sorry, I'm checking my notes here. Okay, so the second one is gonna be, don't be afraid of labels. So there are so many people that are terrified of, of labeling themselves in a variety of different circumstances beyond just what we're talking about today. But labels don't have to be a bad thing. And one thing I can, guarantee is yeah. if you don't give them a label they will label themselves and the label that they're going to give themselves is going to be harsh yeah <laughs> yeah um a lot of times we'll hear from kids that are really struggling and they'll say something like oh i'm just stupid or i'm just difficult or you know a variety of other things like that and as a parent that yeah that's just a death blow to hear your child say something like that i mean it kills us as coaches and tutors to hear our students say those words. Um, I will share a highly personal story that I've never really shared with anybody else. And when I was a kid, I really struggled with math. I could never figure it out. I mean, I failed just about every math class. My parents were seeking outside tutoring and I just felt like, wow, I'm so stupid. You know, all of my friends can get these really easy <laughs> math equations and it just boggles my mind like I must be stupid um it followed me all the way to the workplace when you know I had a job and I was trying to calculate some time differences and it just didn't make any sense to my brain and after doing some research and after talking to Caitlin and learning more about dyslexia I realized that I probably have dyscalculia so I mean <laughs> it's something yeah. that runs in our family our dad has dyslexia and so to finally be able to come to terms with that and say that there was a reason why my brain was working the way that it was and why my brain couldn't compute some of these things that everybody else's brain seemed to be able to do just fine. It was, I don't know, it was refreshing to be able to finally say, okay, I'm, I'm not stupid. There, there is a reason that this is happening. And now I can move on and I can find ways to accommodate and work with this. Um, and yeah. 
I felt like I got my life back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, just, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I, I think there are so many people that feel the same way. Like our own dad, one of the reasons I got so invested and interested in this whole like dyslexia learning difference journey is um, my dad, we didn't realize he was, he's never been officially diagnosed, but we didn't realize that he's dyslexic until very recently, whenever you know, I started just a few years ago, I started on this whole journey and you know, all of the little quirks that we always knew he had suddenly was like, Oh, <laughs> it makes so much sense. That makes now. exactly, and like he's told stories about you know the same things with him yes. growing up. Like he, it was, it was just, devastating. Yeah, you feel like a complete idiot because it's everybody else. And back in that time, you know, nobody really talked about or knew no. anything about dyslexia. And to be constantly ridiculed about something yeah. like that, and I mean, it is it is a blow to your self esteem. I mean, it will make you feel worthless and like you are just a complete idiot. Yes, and it's not fair because there is a logical explanation to why these kids are doing the things that they're doing they're thinking the way that they're thinking um, and we need to give them that sense of empowerment exactly and that's our third reason for why you absolutely please 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 talk to your kids about their learning differences is that empowerment tool yeah. they already know they're different okay once they get that label of dyslexia don't stop there don't just be like oh you're dyslexic yeah Hey! Like, like, no. Problem okay. Solved. So, <laughs> not yeah. that no. Then dig in. So yeah. you know, your next step is first of all, especially if they're younger, you start doing a lot of research and you really understand what that means and how to talk to them about it in a positive way. There's actually a great book that we have talked about a long time ago. It's called the Dyslexia Empowerment Plan. If your child is just has dyslexia and I'm sure that there are other similar books we'll have to do some yeah. research for some future posts um, but that's a great starting point you know go and look for books that can give you that empowerment to mm -hmm. educate not only yourself but to help teach you how to educate your child exactly exactly and so once they get that label and then once they learn about it they'll start to get that language down of oh okay it's not I can't read because I'm stupid it's I can't read because my brain is wired in a totally different way and I have to be taught, you know, this, that, and the other, or, you know, I have all of these other strengths. Reading just probably How awesome one. would it be to be a teacher and your second grade student comes to you and says, I'm sorry, Miss Baker, I can't do this problem today because I have dyslexia, but here is how you could accommodate me and help me to better understand. Like, yeah. how amazing, <laughs> like I would be blown away. Like I exactly. would just round of applause for this student and this parent for helping to teach this child this. Yeah. Like, that would be an amazing moment. Absolutely. So we want, you know, not only parents to be able to advocate for their children, Children, but eventually we want to give the kids the tools that they need to advocate for themselves yes, yes and talking to them about their learning difference is the first step um, so kind of how we started in this video is sometimes we want to shy away from talking about their learning difference because we don't want them to feel different but different is not a bad thing no it's not so talk to them about that learning difference um, educate them educate yourself empower them and I promise Yes. It will change their life They're for really the better. Fun. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yep. Stay tuned. We'll have some other videos that talk about uh, topics like this. We have some yes. on learning differences. We dive a little deeper into dyslexia. So if you like this content and you want to see more of it, please give us a like for this video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated on future topics. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.